Number three, who do we have here? We have the wonderful Los Angeles Clippers. Um, they're off season. People thought eh, they might have got worse. They might have. They might not have done enough. Um, they brought Marcus Morris back. I think Marcus Morris is a fun guy to have on your roster, specifically for the reason that he's he's a bully, right? He's a tough guy, an enforcer. We liked him in Boston before he started getting shot happy, but they brought in Ibaka as well, who really understands Kawhi. I feel like that's a really good pickup for them for that reason specifically. Um, Batum they brought in <laughs> on a buyout deal. You know what? Batum, he's not really the best player anymore. But I feel like he can give you a nice spark off the bench for like a five-minute stretch. Because in Charlotte, he had those minutes where he looked pretty good, actually. But it's just a thing of he was getting paid so much that – Five it's, minutes? It's like the Tristan Thompson thing. His contract was so bad that people thought he was a bad player. But he's not a bad player. He's a decent player. Um, who else are they bringing? Oh, Luke Kennard. That trade from Detroit. What in the world? You know what? When there's another bad, when a bad G, when a bad GM takes a takes a job somewhere, and you can manipulate him into trading you like a good asset, I guess you just have to do it because there's no excuse for him getting rid of Luke Kennard like that. That was that was highway robbery. You know what? Shout out to the Clippers for picking him up because horrific deal by Detroit. I'm and shout out to our friend Abe for being a Troy Weaver fan. I we don't, don't know how, how you do it. There's no justification behind that job. Um. They lost Montrezl Harrell, sixth man of the year award winner. It's going to suck. Uh, who else they lose? Oh, Jermichael Green, the guy who left to go to the, the team. guy who had to answer to, hey, Jermichael, why did you guys lose game six of the finals? Like, well, I don't know. Why don't you guys ask why? Yeah, so there's that, you know. He left. Their offseason was kind of a – it was an iffy one. But I think a lot of people were banking on Paul George – and his bubble being a fluke, I think that it's okay to assume that. I mean, last year, what? Before last season, he had that 28-point-per-game season where he was, like, third in MVP voting. But you look at his you look at his career stats and numbers, it's his best career ever by – like, best year ever by far. He didn't have a year where he was scoring any – I don't think he had a year where he was scoring over 22.5 until last year. You, you got to think maybe – or two years ago, but you got to think maybe – the bubble was a fluke, and he'll come back. Got his back, dude. Dude, I think he could be good. I, I don't know. I'm excited to see how the Clippers do. They got to fix what's going on in that locker room, though, because you can't let Kawhi walk all walk all over everybody. Paul George, too. There's no reason for Paul George to be able to walk over people. Kawhi at least won a championship twice. There's no reason for Paul George to get that type of treatment. Kawhi should be getting that treatment for the fact that he went to the Los Angeles Tony Clippers. I mean, who the heck would even go to the Clippers at – any point until Kawhi went there and their biggest signings were who who was the last big players they got the last big players they really even had were what trades Chris Paul traded Blake Griffin drafted. Chris Paul trade that Chris Paul trade was complete bullshit because the Lakers got him first it's the like the Lakers got him but David Stern said nah yeah, this I, not- I don't I don't want to get into that too much but like you look at their you look at their franchise history Maybe something went on behind the scenes that led Kawhi to sign with the Clippers. Ooh, that's a new conspiracy theory going around the NBA. Ooh. Was there special help getting Kawhi to LAC? Let's get into that. So what happened here, I'll just go over it real quick. On Monday, Johnny Wilkes, no one knows who the heck this guy is, he filed a lawsuit in LA alleging that Jerry West of the Clippers agreed to pay him $2.5 million if he helped the Clippers sign Kawhi Leonard in free agency of summer 2019. Wilkes pretty much says that, hey, I helped you guys get Kawhi, so now you guys need to pay me. They never paid him. And he's alleging that, hey, this all happened. I was the reason why Kawhi even came here. And blah, blah, blah. Kawhi had to say that that has nothing to do with me saying my mind to go somewhere. I'm from LA. I grew up there my whole life out here. People are trying to find any way to get money. So he probably won't be the last. I know a lot of people. Let's hear from Jerry West. I want to hear what Jerry West had to say about this. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. This is Jerry uh, calling. Um, 
you know, I, I really want to thank you uh, a lot for, you know, trying to help. <clears throat> I heard this morning that everyone over in the Lakers camp think you're going to get him. Um, I just I find that hard to believe that he would want to go to that shit show where he would not even be, wouldn't get his name in the paper, and he wouldn't be the face of the franchise, that's for sure. And he might be the best player on the team, but I um, uh, hope things are well. And, well, again, I really, really appreciate everything you've done. Uh, we will uh, – I'll keep you apprised of what goes on. But uh, I do want to <clears throat> get together with you privately and and love to take you to the dinner and, uh, and even Sam, if he's around, so we can uh, – so I can at least pay my respects to you guys for, for being so generous and helpful. Uh, take care. Uh, talk to you sometime soon. Bye-bye. That's allegedly Jerry West, Caleb. First of all, do you believe that's him? I'm going to say yeah, because once again, TMZ got a hold of that. And I feel like TMZ – TMZ is, like, there while the news breaks. It's kind of insane. Like, it kind of feels like they set these guys up for that stuff. But I will say this. Do they really think this is the only type of situation where a guy kind of – edges a friend to sign somewhere you know what I mean like this stuff happens I feel like this stuff happens every single sport and it's like the big market teams they I feel like everybody knows about it but they're like okay well we'll just let it go but it's like it's funny now that the Clippers are getting in trouble for it I, I don't know really I don't even know how serious this stuff could get but as of right now I'm gonna say that it's it's a small story that could expand into something massive but on the surface, it just kind of looks like another guy saying, look, I helped you guys get him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know how much of it to believe. That, that voicemail, though, that's a little bit, that's a little bit concerning because that could turn into something. That voicemail honestly made me think, okay, at first, I was like, okay, this just sounds just so dumb. But then when I saw that voicemail, I'm like, wait, listening to that, it kind of tells me Jerry West can get in a lot of trouble. And – Honestly, from the beginning, I'm like, man, imagine how much Jay West has called people in the past. This kind of makes me look back at when he was with the Lakers. And what did he do to get Kobe and Shaq to stay? And what are some of the other stuff he did for guys to get to get there? And some of those things, and how much do other GMs do? We saw Masai Ujiri just drop the whole we wanted Giannis video like yeah. three days before he signed his extension. And my thing with that is like, okay – Let's say Giannis doesn't sign that extension and he goes into the season with everybody knowing he's going to enter free agency. Does Masai Ujiri get fined for that? Absolutely. Because, but in a way, it's like he talked about because didn't Magic Johnson get fined some money for saying that he liked the way somebody played or something? Magic got fined because he said that Giannis should stay in Milwaukee. Just name dropping Giannis got him in fine. Well, Giannis. Is a different story, but Magic got himself in a lot of trouble. They asked him, is he looking at getting Paul George? And he said no. And then on freaking Jimmy Kimmel, he goes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, he started, started doing that he winking. winking. He starts winking in front of the camera, and you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. – come on, that look at GMs. you got to have a little bit more of logic than, hey, let me go act like an idiot in front of the public and show that, hey, I'm tampering. Whatever. I know it's a stupid rule. Every team tampers. Leave it alone. Just drop it. At this point, tampering should be out the window. Everyone does it, especially the big markets. And the big markets are never actually going to get in trouble. What's the worst that's going to happen? The, if the Clippers lose a draft pick from Kawhi and Paul George recruitment, does that really hurt them? No, because they got a championship-level guy. If, say, for example, the Kings – got in trouble for trying to get Dante DiVincenzo and trying to trade Bogdan before the free agency started. Yes, that actually screws the team like that over because they suck. They need the draft pick. So I don't think it matters in the Clippers. We won't talk too much more on that. Let's move on to our buy or sell. You know, I'm definitely motivated. Uh, I want to win. The difference of this offseason is it's, it's a quick turnaround. You know what I mean? Uh, so... Rather than other off seasons, taking more time off, you're, hey, I'm doing stuff to, you know, maintain my body to stay ahead of the curve during that time. And physically, I, I feel good. I'm motivated. I'm ready to start. I want to get back after it. Um, you know, uh, it does leave a bad taste in your mouth blowing a 3-1 lead. But 
you know, I love it. Uh, you know, these are things that build the build the player. Um, these are things that I like, the, the challenge and, uh, you know, the road of going to a championship is hard. And I, I love the process. I love, I'm enjoying the process still. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how strong we are and see if we can build from things like this. This is what makes players. That's Kawhi Leonard, our friend Abe's favorite player. Caleb, buy or sell, Kawhi has been overly disrespected this offseason. I'm going to buy. I feel like we name drop him personally on this podcast every single episode, but that's partially because we know Abe listens, and we like to leave those little Easter eggs for Abe, see if he's actually listening. And so far, he's picked up every single one. It's kind of impressive. But I feel like everybody – I feel like people were so reactionary with Kawhi for some reason. Like, when he won the championship with Toronto, everyone was like, oh, my gosh. This guy's the best player in the league. And then when he has a struggle season, teammates, chemistry, everything's not really meshing. Everyone's like, wow. Well, we don't have to worry about the Clippers anymore. It's like we just got to calm down, stop reaction, reacting to every little thing and taking it to that next level for no reason. You know what I mean? Like calm down, see how he plays. I'm kind of excited to see him this year. I feel like he could have a decent year. I'm going to agree as well and the exact same thing that you said. We have been part of the reason of Kawhi getting disrespected, but we're not the only ones, all right? So don't get mad at us. But we, I will say that Kawhi has been disrespected a little too much this season. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is he's such a talented player, and he's one of the best players we've seen in a while. A lot of stuff he can do. One of the best two-way players of this decade, right? Like yeah. comparing to him to LeBron and who else? That's where I stop it at is – I look at two-way players and I go to LeBron and I stop. That's not Steph. That's not KD. That's not maybe Giannis, but Giannis is becoming that next player. And and Giannis, actually, you can say it because he won defensive player of the year. So, again, these are the guys I look at. And to me, I think Kawhi is a championship-style player. Now, the way he was acting was a little too much, but, hey, LeBron is the biggest diva on the planet. But yeah. I love LeBron, and LeBron is a championship player. LeBron, when he goes zero dark 23 mode, it's over. You can't stop him. Kawhi is a lot of the same. Kawhi might be a little bit of a diva behind the scenes, but he knows how to step it up when it's game time. And I love Kawhi. I'm really excited to see him this year. I hope he has a bounce back season. I can't stand Paul George. I think Paul George enables Kawhi into being more of a diva. So hopefully they can get Paul George out of there. But – I think Kawhi will have a big year, and hey, don't be surprised if he's in the MVP talks. Next up, let's go to Paul George. And I'm just kind of wondering, you know, where is kind of that line where, you know, how much he was responsible for what happened in that series as opposed to what how much the players were responsible for? I mean, I think that's where everybody got misconstrued. We all take responsibility into that. Um, fact of the matter is me being one of the – Um, you know, top players on the team. Um, I wasn't at a peak performance. I wasn't playing well enough. Um, The fact that I gave up a 3-1 series being on that floor um, sits with me and haunts me. Um, You know, and and, and not to go back and forward and, and, you know, I want to clear things up. I respect Doc. Um, I think Doc is a hell of a motivator, hell of a um, coach. Um, doesn't mean I agree with everything that we did, um, but that does not belittle the fact that I respect him and I respected him um, in that position. There's Paul George defending his comments that he made on our podcast. Remember, he was on our podcast, but yeah, we won't talk about it. He was on our podcast and he, he pretty much said that, oh, the reason why we lost is because I wasn't making adjustments because there was no adjustments being made. And now he's saying, I don't blame Doc at all. You saw all that. Caleb, buy or sell. Paul George doesn't blame Doc Rivers. Do you believe him? This one's a weird one. I'm going to buy that he doesn't truly blame him for everything. I feel like Paul George is too smart of a player to really put all the blame on somebody else. He was a massive reason why L.A. struggled. Um, And I feel like him kind of throwing the blame on everyone else but himself because he hasn't really owned up to anything. He's kind of said, I was used wrong. And it's like, man, Doc Rivers didn't make you fire up a shot in game seven off the top of the backboard. 
Like, that's that's nothing he could do about that. You had an open shot. And it's like, I like to think he's too smart to put the blame on everyone else. But I'm, I'm going to say that he doesn't truly think that. I'm going to say that he does. And the reason for that is, if you saw what he just said, he just said that he actually owned up to it. And he said, you know, I didn't play well. I actually didn't play good at all in that series. And he's crediting his trainer – as the reason why he's going to have a good year. He said he got his old trainer back that he had for his MVP season. Now, might that help him? Yeah, it could. But I don't know how much that really does for him. And, yeah, he might do that. But at the end of the day, I feel like Paul George is just looking for the constant blame game. He wants to find anything but himself and even with himself. He found a way to excuse himself. He said, well, it wasn't really me. He pretty much blamed his new trainer as the reason why he sucked last year. That's a good point. We'll see what happens with Paul George. Hopefully he does have a bounce back here. I'm sure a lot of Clipper fans want to see that. Last one, let's go to Tyron Lue. Um, I think change the size of the floor. Um, You know, I've always been a big, big guy, a big fan of just, you know, playing through our best players, our best offensive players, and then those guys making plays for everybody else. And the biggest thing for us right now is just, you know, what we've we've been learning the last few days is, how to play after the play. You know, we make a, we call a play for Kawhi, PG, Lou, um, any of our guys, Luke, Marcus, that when we don't have it and they make a pass out of the play, that we're able to continue to keep playing without getting stuck and getting stagnant. So that's been our main focus the last, you know, three or four days of just teach us how to play after the play. And guys are doing a good job of picking that up. There's Tyron Lou, new head coach of the Los Angeles Clippers. Caleb, my question to you, Tyron Lue is the perfect fit for Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. My thing is, in Cleveland, there's always these videos of, of Lou being really like the only coach LeBron's had that really like stepped up to him, like basically told him, you're not playing good enough. And like not too often you see coaches really mess with LeBron that much because we know how powerful LeBron is. One word and that coach is fired. So it tells me that he's good with egos, He's good at keeping guys in check. But also in that same breath, he was the assistant coach in L.A. last year. You know what I mean? Like, he should have stepped up, but maybe Doc Rivers was, you know what I mean, being the head guy and wanting all the control. I'm not sure. We're not there. Obviously, we don't play for the Clippers, so we can't tell you the truth of what all happened there. But I don't know. I'm excited to see how he does. I'm going to buy that he's the right guy for the job because of how he handled LeBron. He's he's a decent coach. A lot of people are going to say, well, LeBron was the only reason he won a championship. Like, yeah, that helps for sure. But he wasn't bad at making adjustments. I am I think he could be a really good coach for them. I'm going to say bye. He's the right fit. I'm going to bye as well. And a lot of the same reasons as you. I think Kawhi and Paul George's ego was allowed to just get to a next level with Doc Rivers. Doc doesn't really do a good job of controlling egos to me. I mean, if you look at the Celtics now. Look at what they treat Ray Allen like till this day. And he enabled that. He allowed Rondo and Paul Pierce and KG to be so petty to the point where they still act very petty till this day. You know, I know I know Pierce and Ray are close now. I know that because they, they go they I know as of last year, they can't really do much this year because of the pandemic, but they had a charity softball game together. So I know they're cool, but I know KG still hates them. I know Rondo still hates them. But there's no reason Doc should have let it get to that point. Because there was a point where Rondo and Ray were literally not talking. Their lockers were right next to each other. They were not saying a word to each other for, like, months. Like, Doc should have stepped up and said, hey, guys, we're grown men here. You know what I mean? But Doc doesn't. Because I just feel like Doc loses locker rooms way too easy. And that's why I think Tyron Lewis is a good fit. Hey, we talk about how crazy Kyrie really is. And I'm not – I'm joking with the crazy, but he's – Kyrie's a little weird. And it's okay. We're all weird, right? We're all weird. And I was telling Caleb this earlier. Kyrie's a little weird individual, and that's okay to be weird. He's also really smart. And the fact that Tyron Lue is able to handle a personality like Kyrie and handle a diva like LeBron that wants to win so bad, yet he acts like a diva all the time. He calls out players through social media, and he does stuff like that and whatever. My point being, he has two players like that, and then Kevin Love, who – we saw had a ton of problems, especially with 
mental health issues and stuff that he was going on in his personal life. He handled all of that. And J.R. Smith, keep in mind, all those guys were on his roster. Tristan Thompson, another guy super controversial, right? The Kardashians and all that. So to me, Tyron Lue is a good fit for that group. I think he'll really help Paul George buckle down. He knows how to win a championship. I believe he'll be the perfect fit there. I don't know if they'll win a championship, though, but I think he will be a much better coach than Doc Rivers. I agree with that. 